I would say always contact a lawyer if you've been injured by a drunk driver, always. And I would say contact somebody even if your injuries are a little bit questionable. If you're injured in a collision with a drunk driver, could you have a civil case in addition to a criminal case? Well, that's what we're going to find out right now because that's what we're going to ask the lawyer. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. And my guest is Alaska attorney Mark Choate, who has many years of experience helping people who have been hurt because of someone else's negligence. Mark, good to see you again. Thank you for uh, helping us out today. Great seeing you, Rob. I want to remind everybody that if you want to ask questions about your specific situation, it's easy to do. Just go to askthelawyers.com, click the button at the top of the page that says ask a lawyer, and it'll walk you right through the process right there. And it's free to do too. Mark, uh, let's just start off. Uh, I guess drunk driving is a problem everywhere, but let's talk about your area specifically. What about Juno and that area? Is, is it a big problem there? What have you seen in your experience? Drunk driving um, has... I think it's been a problem through my, you know, I started practicing about 42 years ago. It's always been an issue. Uh, I think it has actually uh, decreased some in the last, you know, decades because there's more public awareness. And the fact that people have cell phones means that when someone's driving erratically, it's often called in or captured by someone's video. So there's, I think, more information about drunk driving now than there used to be. But it's a big issue. Uh, surprisingly, uh, I would say you know, we we see both in Juneau and here around the state in Alaska, you know, almost on a daily basis, uh, a drunk uh, uh, injuries involving drunk driving. So if someone is injured uh, and they suspect uh, in a collision with another driver, they suspect the other driver has been drinking. What's your advice? What should they do? What's the process? Well, there's really, you know, there's two issues. The first issue is that drunk driver will almost, you know, 99% of the time, if the police are called and they get to it, uh, they're going to arrest them and they're going to proceed with the uh, criminal case against the drunk driver. From the civil side, which means the money damages side, you know, it's usually not enough when you go, well, gee, I'm glad that person is doing three days in jail or that person's got an ankle monitor, you want to get recovery. Uh, the law provides some special protections for people who've been injured by drunk drivers uh, here in our state. That includes the fact that um, you get your actual attorney's fees uh, when you've been injured by a drunk driver. It's one of the few places where that happens. So that can be some incentive to the, if there's an insurance company um, that insured the drunk driver's car to get them to settle. But um, there are some uh, benefits. I think, I would say in the last six months, I've done two or three of, maybe three or three of these. Um, and, uh, you know, you still have to prove your case like you would with any other, which means not only that the other driver was at fault, but that you have injuries and what the injuries are and how they'll affect you long term. But it's certainly um, it, you have some advantages when the driver has been uh, arrested. Uh, often there's police video. Uh, body cams are becoming much more um, common. So you'll see much more video of the, often the drunk driver at the scene talking about things. Uh, so there's there's more to work with. I think there's also for the person who's been injured, it feels more hurtful. You know, it's one thing when someone's not paying attention, you feel bad and you feel unhappy. But when someone's been drinking, they've hurt you. Um, it's much more significant because it truly was um, as a result of somebody else uh, breaking the law and deciding that they didn't care if they hurt somebody else. So uh, there's a lot there's more, I think, emotional consequences when you're hit by uh, someone who's drunk, just as there is when anyone commits a crime. That's uh, that's really interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. Explain a little bit for people that might be confused who might say, well, there's a <clears throat> there's a prosecuting attorney, a DA or something involved. Uh, they'll take care of the case. Explain the difference between the civil, uh, the criminal and the civil and and what a, a personal injury attorney can do to help in those in this. Well, you case. know, the, the criminal side is really the government, whether it's your county or your city or your state uh, bringing charges for violating a criminal law, which you know, usually now it's about 0.08 blood alcohol will cause you to uh, 
be considered to be driving while intoxicated or under the influence. And there are criminal penalties for that, which can include jail time, can include probation, can include often electronic ankle monitors now, uh, some fines. And they may order some what's called restitution, which is some dollar damages for your loss of um, your medical bills, uh, things like that. Very hard to collect. On the civil side, that's the case that you individually have against the drunk driver for their violation of the law, which causes you harm. And you, because they've been uh, drinking, you have some sort of amped up remedies because you could sue them for gross, not just negligence, which means a failure to use ordinary care, but gross negligence, which means that they were grossly negligent and even reckless conduct where you can say, especially depending on the blood alcohol, this person absolutely um, was reckless when they uh, they drove. And I could even you can even request punitive damages, which means a punishing damage on top of your normal damages. Is it the kind of thing, Mark, that someone should wait till the end of their uh, criminal case and see how that turns out before they contact someone like yourself to help with the civil case? Or do they go on at the same time? What's your advice? Well, you know, the in drunk driving cases, unless there's a death or a, uh, it results in a felony charge, which it can. I mean, more and more frequently now, uh, what used to just be a DUI or a DWI, uh, meaning a misdemeanor charge for drunk driving, will be amped up into a felony because there is um, a bodily injury. And so you can see some uh, felonies charged for drunk driving now. They can take longer than a, a misdemeanor. But I would say always contact a lawyer if you've been injured by a drunk driver. Always. And I would say contact somebody even if your injuries are a little bit questionable. You just don't know yet how things are going one that we did just recently, a fellow, um, a drunk lady runs into the side of his van. He's able to get out of the van, walk around, um, is feeling a little bit of a hitch in his hip, but doesn't think much of it, doesn't immediately go for treatment. And then <clears throat> within the next six months, his hip is bothering him and bothering him. and It's getting worse. And he does a lot of physical labor, so it was uh, really affecting him. It turned out that he had what's called a tear of the labrum, which is some of the uh, c- uh, tissue that uh, connects the, the hip to the upper, uh, the, to the pelvis. And those labral tears, $80,000 to repair. And so, uh, you know, we had to be able to show that the, the, that this crash caused that tear with a expert orthopedic surgeon. Um, but we reco- we just, I just uh, actually uh, recovered money for him and was very happy to, to be able to deliver that to him. So, yeah, I would say the sooner the better, if anything, because a lawyer that does his work can normally help advise you to follow through with your medical, to not uh, simply ignore stuff. Uh, you know, and, and DWIs can also, uh, in serious crashes, can, um, I have, um, we have two cases right now where um, uh, my clients were killed. Uh, I represent their estates. Both young men killed because of a drunk driver. And so in those, those kinds of cases, the damages are obviously very significant. And um, you need someone to help you parse out um, both how to go after the driver and to look for sources of recovery. Because it may not just be the driver's uh, insurance. It could be the business owner or the bus- the employer of that driver. If the driver was uh, employed, working at the time they were doing that. It could be um, the dram shop, the place that gave, that sold them or, or uh, gave them uh, alcohol when they shouldn't have. And so in a, you know, we do cases involving um, liquor stores and bars that serve people when they right. shouldn't have. So those are all places, resources. Uh, one last question, Mark. So what if the person, the drunk driver, is, is uh, not charged ultimately or found not guilty? Does that mean that, that the person injured then wouldn't have a civil case or are they not connected? No, it wouldn't. It doesn't um, matter. It, it may affect uh, the idea of whether you could get punitive damages, meaning you could show recklessness. Right. But if someone runs into you and they're not using due care, 
even if let's say their blood alcohol wasn't 0.08 or because there's some mistake at the scene where the police do something wrong where they can't bring that evidence in, it wouldn't change the, your ability, you know, and the, and the ability of, you know, of a, a good uh, personal injury lawyer to help you out. Absolutely nothing would stop that. Lots of great information as always, Mark. I learn something every time we talk. Thank you so much for helping us out. Great talking with you. Take care. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been Alaska Attorney Mark Choate. I want to remind you that if you want to ask questions about your specific situation, head over to askthelawyers.com. Click the button at the top of the page that says Ask a Lawyer, and you can ask away right there to walk you right through the process. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with Ask the Lawyers.